The TikTok ban got me thinking. Is there any way to fight back against laws that the majority of Americans don't agree with? Yes, in fact, there is. It's called jury nullification. Judges and prosecutors hate it with a passion. People have been thrown in jail for passing out pamphlets on the subject. In our legal system, it is quite taboo. But despite that, jury nullification is legal. And it's one of the American population's most powerful tools for stopping our government when it goes too far. Now, as far as I can tell, there are no criminal penalties in the TikTok ban that Joe Biden and Congress just passed. But we don't have to look far to imagine what such a thing might look like. The Restrict Act was the House's first bite at the apple last year. It didn't get passed, but it had language that said, no person may engage in any transaction or take any other action with intent to evade the provisions of this act. Using a VPN to get around the ban could have resulted in up to a million dollars in fines in up to 20 years in prison. Now let's say, for the sake of argument, such penalties were to somehow come back with this new TikTok ban. With jury nullification, nobody needs to pay a dime in fines. Nobody needs to spend one day in prison because for those punishments to happen, juries must convict. This is the exhaust portal on the Death Star. If every person prosecuted under such a law demanded a jury trial, and we have about 170 million TikTok users sitting on our side of the jury pool, we can refuse to convict. Jury nullification, in simple terms, is when the public invalidates illegitimate laws. It doesn't matter if the prosecutor proves their case beyond a shadow of a doubt. We can still acquit anyone we want. So if you're on a jury, you vote to acquit. It only takes one person to dig in their heels. Hung jury. No conviction. No penalties. You have the power to use your sense of justice, your sense of morality, to protect your fellow Americans from government overreach. The TikTok ban is a clear example of government overreach. Jury nullification helped end prohibition. One of the big reasons the 18th Amendment was repealed with the 21st Amendment was because juries refused to convict violators of the Volstead Act. So the government threw in the towel and gave up. Now, people who oppose the use of jury nullification will try to slander the practice. They'll bring up how Southern juries use this option to acquit people who were clearly guilty of hideous crimes against African Americans back in the day. That's true. Jury nullification is a double-edged sword. It cuts both ways. Jury nullification is a tool. Like any tool, it can be used for good or ill. To apply the sword analogy further, I could use my sword to defend a mother and child from bandits, or I could be a bandit and use my sword to prey upon the weak. We have this tool. It's already in the toolbox. We could start using it today. If you wanted to use such a tool in a case where, mm, I don't know, a woman's bodily autonomy was threatened, no one could stop you. Just one note about using this tool. It's like Fight Club. The first rule of jury nullification is we don't talk about jury nullification, especially anywhere near a courthouse. You bring up jury nullification with the judge, and she'll toss everybody in your jury pool out and bring in a fresh batch. You do all your research before you're in court. Keep that ace up your sleeve until it's time to use it. Juries have power. Anyone over 18 can be on a jury. That's one way we might nullify the TikTok ban, especially if the government tries to attach a penalty. We have the power. Use it responsibly. Please give a like, follow, favorite, repost, and sign up for my free Substack where you can get more detail in every post. Let's make them pay.